fall, my favorite season. I love the changing of the colors of the leaves, the first snows. Yeah, a lot of change. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of change. I like my ways. Yeah, there's been a lot of change in education the past few years. Common Core State Standards, no child left behind. College and career readiness, standardized testing. Some of the things are inherently bad, but with all this change, I fear we're losing something, something important. That's creativity in our teaching and learning. Over the next 18 minutes, I'm gonna talk about creativity in the classroom and how we can get creativity rising. Yes, fall is my favorite season, and the beauty of the changes in these Utah canyons is amazing. But you know it's said that change is the only constant. And this is certainly true of the seasons. I do have to admit though, in general, I don't do well with change. And there certainly have been a lot of changes recently in education. Things such as the Common Core, other college and career ready initiatives. Testing ad nauseum. And even the infusion of technology. These things and more put teachers in a mode of constant change. It gives them a lot to do and not sure how to do it. One thing we do know is that change is not going away. It is after all one of the biggest constants in life. What I want to address today, however, is one thing that needs to continue in our schools, even with all the change that is going on around us. And that one thing is... Creativity. Wikipedia defines creativity as a phenomenon whereby something new and valuable is created. I actually prefer this definition of creativity by Linda Neyman. I grew up believing I did not have a creative bone in my body. I think a lot of our students today may feel the same way. I was never any good at art. And though a little musical, creating a concerto was certainly going to be out of the question. I knew I was never going to invent anything. And although some called my handwriting creative, uh, most just called it chicken scratch. This belief existed within me as I grew older. I always hoped that somebody could teach me to be creative. Anybody? Anybody? Psychologists Michelle and Robert Root Bernstein have said that we believe that the foundational tools for imaginative and creative thinking can be exercised in classroom teaching. We believe that certain habits, behaviors, and strategies associated with the creative process can be modeled in classroom learning. We believe that classroom curricula can promote and sustain nurturing environments for creativity but we don't believe that creativity itself can be taught, not directly. So, if creativity can't be taught, what do we do? Especially with all of these initiatives and changes, I would agree with some that the common core as it continues to develop is a good thing. It gives us some good guidelines, although others will disagree with that premise. In moving toward these and other standards, however, we need to make sure that we don't, as Sir Ken Robinson has postured, 
kill creativity in schools. If you're not familiar with Sir Ken, he is education's champion on creativity. Sir Ken's main concern, as outlined in his 2006 TED Talk, is that instead of helping students find their talents and creativity, we will be using an assembly line method of pushing them through the school system. It is more important now than ever that we work diligently to foster imagination and creativity in the classroom. The Common Core puts the focus on nonfiction texts, technology utilization, and career skills. If we're not careful, it's very possible that educators will zero in on that and forget about the creativity. However, the Common Core standards are purposefully vague in ways that leave them open to interpretation. This should allow educators to be creative themselves in finding new approaches to their teaching. Most importantly, though, it leaves room for students to express their creativity. So, how do we do that? First, as educators, we need to believe that everyone has a creative spark. I mentioned a couple of other definitions of creativity earlier, but I really love this one. Creativity is often born out of our passions. Thus, I would submit that we need to let our students explore their passions. We may even need to help them discover their passions. Dave Burgess has written a terrific book called Teach Like a Pirate. The subtitle of the book is Increase Student Engagement, Boost Your Creativity, and Transform Your Life as an Educator. In the book, Burgess talks a great deal about passion, not just students' passion, but a teacher's passion. He also talks a lot about creativity. He states, many people believe only two kinds of people exist in this world, those who are creative and those who are not. The people who believe this, of course, have already classified themselves into the latter category. They believe that creative people simply walk around and are suddenly struck by creative ideas much like a bright flash of light. They are frustrated by the absence of that flash of light in their own eyes. If I could only get those same flashes of insight and creativity, they lament. It's just not fair. Burgess refutes this thought by saying, Creativity is not the possession of some special class of artistic individuals, but is rather something that can be nurtured and developed in all of us, including your students. So in this age of tests and rigid guidelines, how do we bring out the creativity of our students, and as educators, of ourselves? Even though creativity can't be taught, the creative process can. We can immerse our students and ourselves in creative processes. In other words, we can show them how artists, scientists, technologists, and others have made discoveries and inventions as well as new ways of being in the world. Canadian cognitive scientist and philosopher Paul Thagard wrote this article in 2010. In the article, he gives a set of six suggestions of how creativity can be enhanced or the creative process can be taught. Remember, I said process, the creative process, not creativity itself. Suggestion number one, make new connections. Under this heading, he talks about reading widely. This is a perfect tie into the common core focus on informational reading. He also talks about using analogies to link things together. Using visual as well as verbal expressions. Using multiple methods. And finding new ways to make problems solvable. Suggestion number two is to expect the unexpected. Take anomalies seriously. My favorite, learn from failures, then recover from failures. Avoid excessive attachment to your own ideas, and then be willing to recognize and admit mistakes. Suggestion number three is to be persistent. Focus on the key problems you're trying to solve. Be systematic and keep records and concentrate tenaciously on your subject or your object. 
Suggestion four. And this is where the passion comes in. Get excited. Pursue projects that are fun. Play with ideas and things. Most importantly, ask interesting questions. Have an inclination towards originality and a taste for research. Have a desire for the gratification of discovery. And never do anything that bores you. That can be hard for our students and us. Number five, be sociable. Here he talks about finding smart collaborators, organizing good teams, studying how others are successful, listening to people with experience, communicating your work to others, telling close colleagues everything you know, and communicating your results effectively. And the final suggestion, use the world. Find rich environments, places that can inspire people. Seek inspiration in nature. Have good facilities and use them. Observe and reflect intensely. If I could add a seventh suggestion, it would be simply to have fun. Einstein said, creativity is intelligence having fun. Creativity needs to be nurtured and valued. Part of encouraging curiosity and creativity is allowing for free time for students and us to learn and study subjects that interest them. Remember, like everything else, this takes hard work. But, as has been said many times, hard work never hurt anyone. In Teach Like a Pirate, Burgess says, Creativity is rarely about natural brilliance or innate genius. Much more often, creativity results from properly directed attention, laser-like focus, relentless effort, and hard work. He goes on to say that creative genius is something people tend to romanticize. But the reality is not very romantic at all. Like any skill, it takes practice and effort. So, just how do we get that practice in? This list of 33 ways to stay creative can be a great starting point. I'd like to highlight a few of these items that may work well in the classroom. Something that certainly fits into the core is to try free writing. How about surrounding yourself with creative people? Hey, you're a teacher. You're already surrounded by creative people your students. One of the best ways to breed creativity is to allow your students to collaborate. Give your students a lot of opportunities to try free writing. How about introducing your students to some new music? Music, I believe, is one of the best ways to get the creative juices flowing. Teach your students that when they get an idea to write it down. Also, don't let them give up on ideas. Give them time to play with and test their ideas. Let the students take breaks throughout the day. And I'm not talking about just recess or lunchtime. Every 30 or 45 minutes, give them a chance to stand up, stretch, move. That helps get the juices flowing. Give them time to practice things. Practice may not make perfect, but it sure makes things better. Speaking of being perfect, hey, we don't need to be, and neither do our students. Allow yourself and allow your students to make and learn from their mistakes. And speaking of mistakes, allow your students to take risks. Again, a great way to be creative and learn about themselves. Above all else, have some fun. Maybe that's one of the things that is truly lacking and leads to the stifling of creativity. We need to have fun and our students need to have fun at school. And the final thing I would suggest here is to make sure the students finish something. For me, nothing gets my creative juices flowing like finishing a project. It makes me eager to move on to the next thing. Truthfully, we all know there are way more than 33 ways to stay creative. 
probably more than 3,300, probably more than 33,000. I had an opportunity to spend uh, some time with a grandson over the past week. He'll be turning four years old in a couple of days. And I learned some pretty cool things about creativity from that four-year-old. I really enjoyed watching him mimic and create his own hula moves. Macy? Yeah. And how about a four-year-old photobomb? And while I did expect him to take over my iPad, I didn't expect him to be so adept at making puppet talk. What I really didn't expect, though, is him taking over my heavy DSLR camera and taking some pretty good photos. My grandson showed me once again what creativity is all about. So what does all of this mean? Yes, we are inundated with a variety of programs that seem to regiment everything we do. But I truly believe, and it is my humble, fervent prayer, that we remember to keep creativity as a focal point of our classrooms. A friend of mine made a statement about creativity a few months ago, and I guess it pretty much sums it up. Please, please, inspire the daily practice of creativity in your classrooms and keep creativity rising.